Hello and welcome to the CoinGecko Coda pack. I'm Benjamin Lupton, the author of this pack, and we're going to spend this video going over the pack's functionality, how to use it, and demonstrations of its abilities. So CoinGecko is one of the largest, if not the largest, data aggregator for cryptocurrencies. It has over 13,000 coins that is exposed to us via this pack and 61 currencies, which it performs our currency conversions for, so volume data, price data, market cap data. And not just giving us price data, but also various metadata, so CoinGecko's rankings, developer activity, things like that. And this is all exposed to us by the pack, by formulas, table columns, and sync tables. So we can see here a list of everything that is available, but we'll get more details if we click documentation. So we can see that the CoinGecko pack will expose to us these categories, uh, a categories pack table or sync table, a Bitcoin exchange rate sync table, a coin sync table, and a whole bunch of formulas. So a formula to get DeFi market data, a formula to get global market data, a formula to get all the categories, a formula to get Bitcoin exchange rates, a formula to get the currencies, a formula to get coin market data for a specific coin and also a historical uh, time to get that for. So let's say a month ago, get coin details. This will get all the metadata for the coin as well as its current market conditions. This does not support historical uh, time, only the current. Get coins, trending coins, search coins. So search for a term, see what coins will uh, respond to that term and these column formats. This is going to be one of the primary ways we're going to interact with this pack by these column formats. So coin details and coin market. So coin details, all the metadata, including market conditions and coin market, only market conditions, but can be historical. So with that, we'll make sure we're on the about page and then we'll go Docs using this pack, and we'll see Coin Gecko Pack. So this is the documentation and the demonstration for this pack. So to get started, though, what we're going to do is make sure that we copy this document. That will see make us be able to see how these particular values are calculated. Right now, if we try and right-click them, we don't actually see anything. That's great for you know published documents to end users. But as a document creator, which is what you will be uh, watching this video, we want to actually see what's going on with this document because we want to author our own document that is making use of this pack. So what we're going to do is we're going to click copy the stock and we'll click copy. It doesn't matter where it goes. Maybe it does for you. Copy it to whichever location you wish. So we'll get this new document called copy of coin gecko pack. And we can see that it's opened up a sidebar, at least for me. And now if we right click this, we will get the formula behind it and we can actually see how it is done. So we can see that the D for the DeFi market, the DeFi market dominance is currently at 4.13%. If we right click this, we'll see that this was done by calling the CoinGecko formula, get DeFi market. And then we did a dot to access the property DeFi dominance. So if we eliminate that and we go back, we'll see we get the current market cap of the DeFi market in USD. But if we do a dot, then we'll see all the different properties that are available to us. So we can see volume in 24 hours in USD, the market cap in USD and DeFi dominance. We'll just leave that back as DeFi dominance. Global market cap, we can see that it's at $1 trillion. And if we hover over it, we'll see a whole bunch of extra data here. So we can see that CoinGecko gives us the active cryptocurrencies, any upcoming ICOs, any ongoing ICOs. There's currently 537 markets, volume USD. So there's been $108 billion, I guess, transacted in the last 24 hours. The market cap in 24 hours percent has gone down by 2.13%. And the market ratios are at, okay, market ratios is another object. And this will tell us 
the percentage of so bitcoin is currently at 39.74 percent of the total market cap ethereum is at 17.55 percent so if we right click on this we'll see get global market and that's why we get this horrible thing that gives us all this extra details but let's say we just wanted let's say the the ethereum market dominance it would just be boom and then markets and then ethereum should be ethereum markets oh whoops wrong one markets is account sorry uh dot 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 it is market ratios and then ethereum whoop yeah and then if we do enter that's going to update accordingly yep 17 percent but we'll just command z that we'll go back because we want to just keep that as that and it's fine so there's currently 80 categories how do we do that we called the get categories function or formula and then we just count the results if we didn't count the results we'll see it here so get categories and we get a whole list of the categories and the metadata so if we hover over ethereum ecosystem we can see that this category ethereum ecosystem had this much volume in 24 hours so it's quite a lot uh, the market cap is at that much but the market cap of this category has got gone down by 0.6 percent and that was the last time it was updated and again you could get all of this data by going like first and then we've got the first one so that would be ethereum ecosystem in this example and then we can access specific properties we're not going to do that so we just press escape to get out of that menu this is the same thing but this is as a sync table so if we then go back and we can say sync um oh, actually that will cause the whole thing to sync so if we go packs don't coin gecko we can drag these tables in so categories bitcoin bitcoin exchange rates and coins we've already dragged the categories table in so that's this so we can't drag it in again that's a limitation of coda you can't have more than one instance of a sync table but we will see for the category uh, this is the rich column type. We can see here column type is a CoinGecko category. And what that does is it allows us to get these extra details easily. If we were to click add column here, we can pull out those extra details just via this add column menu. So let's delete that column because we don't want that right now. If we keep scrolling down we'll see there's 61 currencies available to us. Same deal. Um, oh, okay, in this one, we named this formula. So get currencies, and then we just kind of did a count on it, right? So this is just a list of currency identifiers. There's no hover over here because it's just a list of strings. Coins, there's 13,000 coins. So that was done by getcoins.count. And it's the same deal if we could do first, we will then get the coin details. Now, because this is a list, we're just kind of getting the basic coin details here. So ID, symbol, name, URL, and image. ID is a coin gecko identifier. This is how we will preferably get details about coins. So let's change that back to what it was. And if we had a table, this is just like a quick example table. So we've got Bitcoin, Ethereum. If I was to type Solana here, it will go away and fetch Solana's details here. And then it'll automatically populate the CoinGecko identifier. So the coin market column, I mean, coin market details, the current price is at $40.21. And if we were to ask, well, what price is it back in May? Then we will see that it was $94 back in May. This is the same process here, if, but we would type the ID in its own column and then we get the coin details by using this identifier. All right, when, we'll just make that when. So May 1st, $85. We'll go into that in more details in the getting started.
this is still just an overview of all the power of this pack. So trending coins, we can see that these coins are trending. Uh, search, we can do a search here. So if we search Solana, this formula will update pretty much right away. And the way it works is search coins and then it searches for, so the search coins formula and then the search term, which is this input here. Now to update the table, we actually have to click sync search table and then that will cause this table to update. The reason why uh, is because sync tables happen on the server side, they don't happen on the client side. So yeah, that will take a while again because it's happening on the server side. So let's get started. Actually, sorry, there's one more table below here which is the Bitcoin uh, currency exchange rate. So this is that final table. So PAX, CoinGecko, and Bitcoin exchange rates. So this is just what is one Bitcoin in many various different currencies. Uh, maybe this will be useful to you for performing quick calculations. However, there's no need to particularly use this for the average user. So let's get started with this because that would have been pretty overwhelming as you know the viewer because uh, that was uh, showing kind of everything that the pack can do more or less or exposing you to the surface of what the pack can do. So let's get started. We've already copied this document. We don't need to do that again. So once we have a new editable document, type equals on a new line. Say below this paragraph. This will open the form as prompt. Type coin gecko, then press tab. This will show you several formulas available to you. All right, so let's, let's try that. So we'll do an press enter, create a kind of a new line. Let's tap equals, we'll see, hey, we do get that little formula, that little window for doing formulas. So we'll type coin gecko, it's already auto completed it. So we'll press tab, and then we can see all the different formulas available to us. Okay, cool, let's exit out of that, and let's proceed with the guide. We will then type or select get coin market, press tab, then enter and you'll get a result like this. Okay, so let's try that. So coin gecko, tab, get coin market. Whoop, that should say coin details. Let me just fix that up. Getting started. Get coin details. Okay. So when you work through it, this will say get coin details there. All right, and you will get a result like this. So get coin details, Bitcoin, let me go through that again. So equals coin gecko tab, get coin details tab. And we can see that it's already giving us Bitcoin pre-filled. So that's the ID, the coin gecko ID for Bitcoin. And we'll see if we mouse over it, we get all this really advanced details for it. We can see uh, the coin, we can see its symbol here, its URL, its image on this coin object. We can see its market data and a lot more stuff here. Price, we can see all these different currencies that it's converted to. Um, let's mouse over that again. There's a lot of hovers here. All right, volume same deal, volume information and all the different currencies and market cap and all the different currencies. And also just various aspects about like metadata for the coin. So pull request merge, Alexa rank and whatnot. And in the coin details, we're getting description and all this. So we'll go more into that uh, right now. So, all right, properties of coin details and market data. You can then right click the result and type a dot to see its properties. So I got rid of my ones. So let's, uh, let's use this one. I'm going to do dot. Okay, so now we can see those properties. So ID, when, coin, market categories, uh, country origin, description, genesis date, homepage, chat URL, announcement, Twitter, details, 
So, so much detail is actually about this coin is exposed to us. All right, so what's next? Let's get rid of that dot there. All right, to see its properties, navigate through them with your keyboard to discover everything available to you. We kind of just did that. Once you have done so, navigate to market and you will get, and you will, let's fix that little typo there. And you will see the current market price for that coin in USD. However, if you press dot again, you'll discover there is another level of fine grain details available to you. All right, so let's try that. So we've got get coin details, we press dot, we see the properties available to us. If we go to market, then we'll see, okay, we're seeing the current price in USD, but we can tell that this is a special object. So if we press dot again, then we can now see all the market details about it. So that's really cool. Um, and then if we go like price and then we do dot, then we can get its price in all these various different currencies. So let's just go like, let's go Great British Pound. So one Bitcoin is currently worth 19,000 in Great British Pounds. Alrighty. So dot, dot, dot. Yeah. So that's just kind of walking us through step by step what I just demonstrated for you. So historical market data. So I'm not sure why that formula right there is failing. Maybe it's just taking a while. Yeah, it's just taking a while. All right. Let's just speed that up by doing price USD. There we go. So I think that was just CoinGecko syncing there. Yeah. So that probably won't happen to you. It will probably look like that right up front. So what this is, is we're using, instead of get coin details, we're using get coin market. Now get coin market allows us to pass over this optional when date. And if we were to say do it for a month from now, we could do relative date now and then minus one, so minus one month. If we do minus two, it'll be two months ago. So the market details from two months ago. Minus four, the market details from four months ago. And then we can get all those details about it. So price and then the price details four months ago in that. We can also specify a specific date. So e.g. 30-12-2017. Um, let's try that. 30-12-2017. Uh, Is that going to work? No, it's not. Uh, so we need to pass over a uh, date object from Coda. So date, year, so 2017, let's go 12 and we'll go 01. So the 1st of the 12th, 2017, it was only worth 10,000. And we can get all the advanced details about it here. All right. So what we can do is we could even make that customizable. So this is telling us how we can create like a little thing like this where we can get a little date picker. So if I want to get the details on a specific date like this, then we'll create a little date control. And this one is already called coin when. So the way we would do that is it's just telling us we do a create a new line, we do a slash, and then we do date, and then we do date and time. And then we can call this whatever we want. So we can call it my date time. All right, date format. Yeah, that's all fine, but we could be an international audience. So let's do it in that date format. All right, so here is that, but it's using this coin when. For us, we'll use that new one we just created. So my date time and we'll see that it's 23 
$5,000 on that date that we did. Now, if we change it, so we'll go back here and let's change it to, let's go July 2021, July 1st, 2021. So Bitcoin was worth $35,000 then. Now, let's say we don't know what the uh, specific identifier is for the coin, or we're trying to just discover some coins that match a specific search term. Well, we can then use the search coins uh, formula and just type our search term here. So this is returning all the coins that match the search term polygon. And if we were to want to get the ID from it, we can do search coins, polygon, let's get the first one, so the most popular one, then we do dot symbol, and that will give us the symbol. Um, so that's generally what's traded on exchanges. If we wanted the coin gecko identifier we're using in our API, then it'll be dot ID. So that one should actually be dot ID because that's what it says here. So dot ID is coin gecko identifier symbol is what exchanges use. All right, let me fix that little piece of the documentation up. way for a coin that's why I got confused so ID there we go all right now sync tables so if we wanted to add a sync table it would be like this so we do a slash and then coin gecko um, however because we've already added the sync tables, it's not going to happen here. Okay, no, it does. So yeah, we get pack tables, then we can press tab, and then we can connect it to the one we want. So let's just say coins, right? And this is just gonna open a view of that existing sync table, but we'll delete that because we don't really need it. Now, for most users of this pack, what will be happening is you probably already have a table and you want to start getting dynamic data uh, for the currencies you already have in your existing table. So we've got Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana here. So how do we start getting this rich data in our own table? So we'll create a column. So we just did it, you know, just like that. So create two columns, column coin details and coin market. Right, it's already kind of pre-done it. So it's just a text column called coin details. But what we'll do is for column type, we'll go packs, we'll go coin gecko, and then we'll go coin details. For coin market, column type, packs, coin gecko, coin market, right? And we'll know it's like that because we can see it. All right, and do the same. Yep, so we just did that. Now add a former for get coin details to fetch the details for the coin that matches the search by using coin gecko search coins. So this row coin name first ID, right? So let's do that. Add former. So we want to get the details for a coin. So we'll say coin whoop, search coins. And instead of using Bitcoin here, we'll do name. And we will do first, and then we'll get its identifier on CoinGecko. And that will then pass it to coin, the coin details column type, and it's going to fetch the advanced coin details for us. So we can see now we've got this really rich data here, and then we could easily add um, data about it. So we can easily add the coin gecko score, the coin, the community score, we can add its description. So very easy to do. What <laughs> we should turn off our wrapping for that. All right, so this is uh, the advantage of these these types. Let's do the same thing for coin market. So we'll go add formula. But this time, because we now already have a a column type that is using CoinGecko, 
we can say coin details and then we can just do ID. And that's going to get the coin market details for it. Uh, this is more useful for historical data because as we can see, the market details is already inside, the current market details is already inside the coin details object. Um, but this will be more useful later on when we try and get historical data. So let's keep going through the guide. So this will result in a table that looks like this. So yeah, that's kind of what we have. And yeah, so we can either add new columns by mousing over and then add column, or we can click this and then we can add the details this way. So one of the advantages of adding uh, the coin market column, even if it is included in coin details, is that it will allow us to add this type of detail. So now we can add the volume in USD, we can add the market cap in USD uh, as well. So that's pretty cool. And this is the one from that example there. Um, but for getting uh, more detailed information, like let's say we want it on a very specific currency, what we would do is see if we go on coin market, we can't go inside price. There isn't this add column uh, section on prices. It's just the limitation of coda. But let's say we want to get the currency's price in Hong Kong dollar. So what we do is we'd go create a new one. It's a currency um, column. We'll do it, add formula. Then we'll go coin market price. And we'll make sure we go to the price object tab and then Hong Kong dollar, enter. And that's its price in the Hong Kong dollar. So let's say uh, we just wanted to change this coin market details again for a month ago instead. So a month ago. What we do is we can't just give it an ID because it doesn't have any uh, date information. So we would change it to get coin market. Now let's pass over that ID and then we'll do that when. So let's do that relative date now, and we'll do a month ago, as we saw from earlier. And that way, what we will do is we can see, hey, you know, we've got market cap here, uh, and we've also got this historical data, and we can see that this is going to automatically update uh, as it goes by and it finishes syncing. All right, so that is everything you need to really kick butt in this in the Coin Gecko pack. Now, some examples of more intense usage of this is this other document that I've coded up. So this is where I've gone through and I've listed like any coin that I've you know heard about um, at some point. Let me just freeze this to this column. So we've got Ave here. Uh, and what I've done is I've kind of documented which exchanges is it available of, on and then also which protocols on those exchanges is it available for? Is there any yields? So Celsius was offering <laughs> when Celsius existed uh, a 4.8% yield on it and weekly payouts. So 4.8 per six, 4.8 six percent yield per annum, but with weekly payouts. Um, this is a reviews. So oh, I've got a little review section where I've reviewed them and then we can see GitHub activity and whatnot. And this has kind of been manual um, data. But because of this new coin details um, column here, we can actually see uh, a lot of here, uh, the coin gecko analysis of its performance. So developer score is 47, liquidity score is 65, the market cap rank is 48. So if we were to go to picks, 
I've already added several of those columns by again, just going um, add column, add column, add column. So I've added CoinGecko rank, CoinGecko score, developer score, sentiment votes up. And I also did conditional formatting. So for these, if it's more red, that's more, more negative uh, indications. And the more green it is, the more good indications it is. So we can see that true Australian dollar is ranked like 11,000 something, and it doesn't really have any data on these. Whereas ample fourth is ranked 240, um, and these are its, its appropriate scores. And Adam or Cosmos is ranked 26. And we can see its coin market price, or its coin market details, right? Which is its price USD as the display. So ample fourth is currently worth $1.28. Whereas a month ago, using that little trick that I showed earlier, so you get coin market, coin details, ID, relative date, yeah. So we can see that it was 0 0.98, and then I've kind of just compared those two. So get the coin market current price, and then divide it by the price a month ago, and we can see its performance. So ample fourth went up by 130%. And if we keep scrolling down, we'll see that Luna, uh, as of a month ago, it went down another uh, 20%. So it's only retained 81% of its value, right? So it's gone from zero cents to zero cents. <laughs> um, but, you know, cryptocurrency can trade in very minuscule amounts. So these are kind of yellow because there's probably one cryptocurrency in here that went to like a thousand times or something like that. Um, but yeah, this is works really well for kind of really seeing. So Ethereum, we can see it's ranked two, great CoinGecko score, great developer score. 80% uh, of people are giving it upwards um, and it's gone up by 100, yeah, uh, well, 53%. So it's retained its value at 153%. All right, and then for this document, these are just where I've kind of reviewed them you know, kind of my little thoughts and then I've given a little rating. And then these are everything um, with all those different details. So this was kind of quite valuable for me to kind of just filter out all the noise uh, through it. And I'll include a link to this document uh, as well if you want to check it out because it is public. I, I've shared it at, let's see, where is it? Yeah, BL Upton. Uh, cryptocurrencies, coda.io, BL Upton, cryptocurrencies. Another one that I've used the CoinGecko pack on is this move to earn document, which is perhaps one of the largest documents on coin on Coda. I think it's, let's find out how many rows it is, stats. So this Coda document has 75,000 rows. And what it does is it pulled in um, scrape data from Steppen, which is one of the move to earn projects, and then checked whether or not its claim of move to earn actually held up against what, what the reality is. And it turns out, no, it, it did not hold up at all to the, to the claim. Um, so, yeah, we can see like GST, which is the current utility token, just completely tanked. Uh, these are some comparisons to weekly performance. But the most important thing is just NFT performance. How have their NFT performance done? And it was just terrible across the board. And if you're a player, um, we can click players here and then we can see like, you know, how badly players got screwed. So yeah, this person, um, they put in six grand and it's currently only worth $418. So yeah, don't, don't go into the move to earn thing, get the data. And if the community behind it, uh, is not forthright with data, if they are just saying, trust us, have faith, have loyalty, then that's a cult and that's not an investment. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, so, yep, this move to earn document, this cryptocurrencies document, and obviously the CoinGecko pack document are great uses of this CoinGecko pack. So with that, uh, 
enjoy the pack. And at the bottom of the getting started guide, there is kind of links to contact me if you have any feedback or suggestions on this pack or want it to do even more things. I plan on making a pack for FTX that will view your positions as well as send, uh, be able to place trades on FTX as well as a pack for up and PayPal. So all your kind of different accounting needs, I will make a pack for. And also I plan on making a date conversion pack as well. So those are all my plans. Uh, I'm a huge user of code. I've been using it for several years, like it very much. And yeah, I've, I'm making plenty of packs for it. So that's the CoinGecko pack. Thank you so much. And I hope it's valuable to you. Bye.